If you've been struggling with sniper camos here in Cold War Zombies, you've come to the right place. In this video, we're going to be going over the best way to complete each camo challenge, the best maps to grind on, the best strats, what fill upgrade to use, what ammo mod to use, overall tips to be more efficient, and the best weapon builds to help you get your snipers plague diamond. If you're looking for anything specific, timestamps will be linked in the description below. Also, if at any point this guide helps you or you learn something new, go ahead and drop a like on it. If not, dislike. Sub button's there too as well. You guys know the drill. Let's get into it. To start us off, let's go over the snipers I recommend and their builds. In order from best to worst, the snipers I think you should complete are the Pellington 703, the Swiss K31, the LW3 Tundra, the M82, and the ZRG. Please, if you have any respect for yourself, do not touch the ZRG. It's ass cheeks. Before we get into the builds, make sure that you go to your skills menu and see that your snipers are fully upgraded. This gives you added buffs and 9 total attachments on your snipers. Anyways, these snipers all have the same attachments besides the CRG, so to save time, I'll go over all the attachments that you should look out for. For the optic, I recommend the Cobra Red Dot. This attachment is mainly up to preference and what you're most comfortable with, but I think you should keep it at 3 times scope and below. Anything higher than that is a little overkill. For the muzzle, I recommend the Infantry Stabilizer. This gives you almost a 50% boost in idle sway control with only a slight hit to your ADS speed, making it easier to aim for heads. The Task Force Shroud is also a solid option. It boosts your idle sway control by 35% and increases your equipment drop rate, however it decreases your shooting movement speed and ADS by quite a bit. But if you want to avoid all these hits to your ADS and movement speed, going with the Stabilizer 308 is probably your best bet. For the barrel, I recommend the Tiger Team. This buffs your reload quickness, damage, fire rate, and bullet velocity but it does hurt almost all of your ammo stats, so be aware of that. The Cavalry Lancer Barrel is a good option for higher rounds. I recommend having a custom mod made for both barrel options so you can swap to it if you start running into more armored zombies. For the body, I recommend the Ember Sighting Point. This gives you an increased salvage drop rate plus better hip fire accuracy, but it does hurt your ADS speed and sprint to fire time. If you want to avoid these speed debuffs, the Steady Aim Laser and the Mounted Flashlight could do the trick. For the under barrel attachment, I recommend using the Bruiser Grip. This increases your movement speed, sprinting move speed, shooting move speed, and aim walking movement speed. For the magazine, I recommend the Salvo Fast Mag. The ammo count will vary from sniper to sniper, but I usually go with the fastest magazine that has the highest capacity. These do come with a slight hit to your ADS speed, so if you're looking for something different, something like a speed loader or a fast mag could do the trick. For the grip slash handle attachment, I really don't see too much of a difference between any of these, but I normally go with the speed tape to get that added ADS speed with no cons to it. For the stocks, they all boost one speed attribute or another, but I find that the SAS combat stock is the most effective. Now, these are the attachments I use throughout my grind, but feel free to mix and match these to find what works best for you. I recommend building your snipers more for speed and mobility than damage because they are the slowest set of weapons to grind in the game. Now for the ZRG, for those of you that are masochists, the only attachment that is different is the barrel. And you should use the rapid fire barrel because this thing takes 3-5 to five business days to bolt back. But honestly, unless you're trying to get Dark Aether on every single weapon in the game, Stay as far away from this dog shit ass gun as you can. Now let's get into what field upgrades you should use. Since snipers are typically single fire weapons, the field upgrades you use are going to be a little different from what you would use with say an AR or an SMG. So for the snipers, the field upgrades I recommend in order are Frenzy Guard, Aether Shroud, Tesla Storm, and Toxic Growth. Frenzy Guard, when fully maxed out, slows all normal zombies to a walk, repairs your armor not only on activation, but will repair it 10% for each normal zombie you take out, and will explode any zombie that hits you. The zombie speed slowing down plus the near invincibility it gives you makes getting critical kills infinitely easier. With Aether Shroud, if you have it fully upgraded, upon activation you become completely hidden from enemies, it'll reload your weapon, increase your movement speed, warp you forward a little bit, and not to mention your charges for this field upgrade increase to 2. This is useful if you corner yourself, you can use it as an oh shit button, or you can use it to get some easy kills on zombies that don't see you. But to make things even easier, you can toss down a stun or a decoy to hold them in place while you're doing it. Tesla Storm surrounds you in lightning that stuns and deals minimal damage to enemies near you. This is helpful when you're in a tight spot, but I mainly use it as a free stun to pick up easy kills. It's also useful for farming points because you'll get some for every enemy that you stun with it. And when it's fully upgraded, you get 25% faster movement speed and special and elite enemies can be stunned as well. Toxic Growth might be a surprise to some of you, but I think it can be very useful. When it's used in areas that can funnel zombies in, more on those areas later, it can help slow and damage zombies making grinding camos easier. When fully upgraded, your charges increase to 3, enemies take double damage while in the growth, and enemies killed by your toxic growth explode giving toxic damage to nearby zombies and it slows their movement speed by 50 percent for three seconds 
As for ammo mods, the only one you should really get is Cryo Freeze. This is the only ammo mod that doesn't kill, meaning it can't take away from your critical kills. On top of that, if it's maxed out, it slows affected zombies 50%, increases the amount of damage you do to slowed zombies, and when you kill a slowed enemy, it spreads the effect to five nearby normal zombies. But if you are having trouble with the camo where you need to get kills rapidly, Shatter Blast can help. Shatter Blast does count towards camos, however, you will not get critical kills when the ammo mod activates just normal kills so please keep that in mind and for perks i would use just about anything besides elemental pop unless you're on a high round but for a more in-depth explanation into perks aether crystals and weapon levels i'll have links to guides i've made on those in the description below now let's go over each camo challenge and their difficulty rating for the grunge camos you need to get 2500 kills with your sniper in zombies this is pretty basic you just got to get kills with whatever sniper that you're using difficulty simple for the liquid camos you need to get 2500 critical kills with your sniper in zombies this is by far the most time consuming challenge for this and basically any other weapon class to get a critical kill the final shot to take down an enemy must hit a specific weak point on the enemy on zombies megatons disciples panzers and manglers it'll be the head Side note, manglers can also be killed faster by shooting their cannon arm, but this does not count as a critical kill to my knowledge. On mimics and abominations, their critical spot is in their mouth, and on tempest, it's in the chest. If you play on controller, deadshot is a must. It literally locks to domes, making this camo pretty mindless. Pun intended. But if you're playing keyboard and mouse, it's best to practice good crosshair placement by keeping it head level. For the most part, your goal should be attempting to get a crit for every single kill that you get, and you should go for them as early and as often as you can. This will save you a lot of time in the long haul. Using some field upgrades and ammo mods like the ones mentioned before help out a lot with getting crits, and using equipment such as decoys and stuns can make the process easy as well. Difficulty? Bitch and a half. For the brushstroke camos, you need to get 2,500 kills with your sniper while it's pack-a-punched. This one's pretty straightforward. Once you have enough points, head on over and pack-a-bunch your weapon and start slaying zombies with it. Difficulty? Effortless. For the vintage camos, you need 15 special or elite eliminations. Basically, almost anything that isn't a normal zombie will count for this challenge, besides dog round type enemies like plague hounds, hellhounds, and tormentors. Firebase C and Forsaken have the most special and elite spawns out of all the round based maps, but I'd personally recommend grinding on Firebase. Difficulty? Not too bad. For the Fauna camos, you need to get 10 kills rapidly 10 times. This challenge is deceptively difficult because of how slow time between shots can be and the fact that at most, a sniper can only collect three zombies at a time. I recommend using any attachments that boost fire rate and trying to keep your zombies trained in a line to make sure you're getting as many kills as you can. If you're still struggling to get these rapid kills, equipping Shatter Blast as your ammo mod can help knock it out easier. But after you get these rapid kills done, remember to switch this back to Cryo Freeze because it'll make getting critical kills more time consuming. Difficulty? Eh. For the Topography camo, you need to get three or more critical kills 25 times. This camo is pretty similar to the Brushstroke camos, but you gotta do it in quick succession. Collats can help get this done a lot faster, so make sure you're training your zombies in a line. And again, I can't stress this enough, for controller players, make sure you grab Deadshot. It makes the whole process much easier. Difficulty? For the infection camos, you need to get 20 or more consecutive kills without getting hit 10 times. This can be pretty challenging, especially with snipers, but focusing on not taking any hits in the early rounds while the zombies are slow can help you knock a few of these out. And field upgrades like Aether Shroud, Frenzied Guard, Tesla Storm, and Toxic Growth will all make getting kills without getting hit much easier. Difficulty? Kinda ass, TBH, NGL. Now the maps and modes I recommend that are most efficient can change depending on your skill level and confidence using a sniper in zombies. For those of you that are more skilled, playing on D-Machina and Onslaught Containment will be your most efficient way of grinding. On D-Machina, I recommend sitting in Penthouse in the early rounds, then when you start to get overrun, hop over to the spawn area and start training there. And in Onslaught Containment, find a map that you can train well on, I recommend Nuketown. And for those of you that I know will try to fight me on the pronunciation of D-Machina, D-Machina, Lick balls. For the average player and my personal recommendation, hop on over to Firebase C. Using Toxic Growth in Colonel's Office is an amazing way to keep yourself safe in early rounds. Just place one at the doorway, one at the window spawn, and your last one somewhere in between as insurance, in case either of them break. And once you start to get overrun, move over to the helipad and train there. 
Also, keep as many of these gates in helipad closed as you can. This will help making training easier and zombie spawns faster. And for those of you that are newer to zombies or camo grinding, Outbreak can be a great introduction, especially with snipers. Here you have a wide open space to make shots and can take out zombies carefree from a distance. This method is one of the slowest, but if you're new to the Dark Aether grind, it's a great stepping stone. And as for Forsaken and Maurade Toten, these maps are decent for grinding, but I believe the previous maps are much better. Forsaken does not have too many grinding spots, especially for snipers, and has a metric shit ton of elites that make it unnecessarily difficult. But the spawn room there isn't too bad for training. And Maur has some okay grinding spots, but it don't suit the sniper very well. However, doing laps around the tank near Pack-a-Punch is a good way to train on this map. But if you do this, I recommend trying to stay away from the buildings because you can get cucked by a zombie jumping down onto you. I think that just about covers all the tips I have on getting your sniper's plague diamond. If there's anything you think I left out or could be useful to others, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. And while you're there, go ahead and leave a ligma there as well to let me know that you got to this point in the video. But that's going to be it for me today. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.